Hey there. So today we're not going to be talking about anything new that's a feature. Instead, we're going to be working a little bit on the architecture of our program. We're going to be um, improving the robustness of our structure. So let's uh, dive right in. Okay, so before we go too much further, I thought it would be a good time to stop and have a little talk about project structure. Because at the moment, our structure is a little bit smelly. Um, so I thought that this would be a good time to go through and kind of clean stuff up and make it a little bit nicer, a little less smelly. Uh, if you ever hear that phrase in uh, reference to a programming project, smelly is like when you're doing something that isn't necessarily best practices. And if other people were to come in, they'd be like, well, I don't know why you did this. This isn't great for other people to use. So. Let's clean some stuff up here a little bit. So the first thing I want to look at is uh, our interactable objects. So I have a tendency when I'm making a new project to focus on trying to get something working quickly so that I can feel like I've done something so that I don't lose patience with the project and move on to something else that's shiny. <laughs> and I know that there are other people who have that problem too. So I have a tendency to not always find the best solution or do the best architecture in my projects if by not doing the best architecture I can get something working quickly and I can feel like I did something and then I'm more likely to come back to my project. As soon as I start kind of delving into too much architecture on my project uh, then I'm not seeing stuff happen and then I don't want to go back to it. So I know I'm not the only one who feels that way but uh, there's kind of a give and take there. You have to you have to have some architecture so that you can expand without just driving yourself crazy. But you also have to see some progress so that you're not bored with your project and wanting to move on to something new. So the sign um, is an example of how I did that. So if we look at the sign here, I created a, like sitting down to make the video, I was like, well, I want to make signs in the game, so I'm going to make a sign script. And so I just made a sign script and um, then we added the context clue, and uh, that made me think about, you know, what we're do going to do next, which is treasure chests. And there's a lot of repeated code between the sign and the treasure chest. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my scripts, and we started to clean this up last time, but we didn't really clean it up, so I'm going to clean it up some more. Uh, let's make a new folder here, and I'm going to call this folder objects. And this shouldn't go in player, this should go in scripts. All right, so for my objects, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do pot, I'm gonna consider my room movement, transfer and scene transition, and sign. I'm gonna consider all of those as objects. I'm gonna put them all in the objects folder. And there we go. And I'm gonna create another folder for I have a tendency to name stuff not like either super descriptively or not descriptively enough. I'm going to call this game stuff, which isn't a very descriptive name. Um, every project I've ever worked on, I've worked on by myself. So uh, I've never had to deal with other people getting really frustrated with my weird quirks. So it's definitely something that you want to keep an eye out for if you're going to be working in a team. Okay, so what I want to do is in my objects here, I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. And this is going to be a parent script for uh, objects that we can interact with. And I'm going to call it interactable. And this is going to serve as the parent for both the signs and doors and treasure chests. So I'm going to open this up. And then I'm also going to make sure that I'm opening up my sign script as soon as Visual Studio opens up. So I will meet you guys back here in just a moment. All right, so laser focus. I've got my two scripts here. I've got interactable and I've got sign. So what I want to do first is I want to make sure that sign is inheriting from interactable. So interactable. So now this is going to get all of the behavior that Interactable has, which right now doesn't do anything. I didn't change anything. But um, I'm going to want to drag some of this stuff over into Interactable so that when I make 
a treasure chest, I can get all that stuff like the context and um, maybe a dialog box if you want it, all that stuff. So I'm going to save my script here. So what I want to drag over is I'm going to want to know if the player's in range. So I'm going to cut this from here. I'm going to paste it into the interactable script. Now that doesn't remove it from sign. You'll notice that player in range went right back as soon as I put that in interactable because this can access anything that's in its parent. Now um, I'm going to take the context signal as well. So I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to go back to interactable. And I'm going to paste that there. All right, cool. And not everything is going to need a dialogue. So what I could do is I could create a second uh, parent of sign that is just like things with dialogue. And then sign would be a child of that, and so would NPCs. Uh, that's something that I could do. Now, I want to, I'm going to leave the dialogue box stuff here, but I'm going to take all of this trigger stuff up to the parent object, up to interactable. So that means that every interactable object is going to need to have um, is going to need to have its own uh, trigger. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. So dialog box set active false. This is an issue because we don't have a dialog box in here. But what I can do is I can override this void in sign. So I'm going to copy this, not paste it. I'm going to go back to sign and I'm going to paste it and there's going to be an issue right away here because I have two uh, on trigger exit 2Ds. I have one in the parent object and one in the child object. In parent object I want to remove this dialog box set active false but I still want to raise the flag and I still want to um, say that the player isn't in range anymore. Now in my sign script here, I want this to be an override void. So can I not override on trigger exit? No suitable method to override. Oh, does it need to be a virtual? We're learning together here. Oh, nope. Okay. So maybe if I just call it Maybe that'll do it. Hmm. And I will also remove the context and the rays because I think that otherwise I'll be doing it twice. But let's find out together. <laughs> let's, let's find out together what I did wrong. So uh, I'm going to save all my scripts. I'm going to go back into Unity here. And it's going to save. And then as soon as it's done compiling, I'll hit play. And if I did everything right, the behavior should work the same as it did before. So let's test that. So if I hit play, all right, so going up here. Okay, so the exit didn't work. And I'm assuming the exit didn't work because of the two exit methods. All right, so do I need to actually do that? Do I need to raise the flag then? I wonder if this is overriding it without needing to be called an override void. When you create a method in the base class, um, the parent class, and then you create a similar method in the child class, you usually need to call that an override for it to work correctly. No, I guess I didn't. All right, that's interesting. Um, I will have to go find out why and report back to you guys. So anyway, that's one way that we can make our project better. Now, when I make a treasure chest or a door or anything else that I need to be interactable, I can get all of this code that I've already written for free by just making it uh, inherit from interactable instead of inheriting from uh, mono behavior. So now I don't have to double down on that code. So that's something. And I can do something similar with the enemies. So I kind of already started doing this. So in my log script here, let me open this so that I can show you guys. I'm inheriting from enemy. 
and the enemy script has, do, 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 do. where did I put that? Yeah, I put it right here. And the enemy script has uh, the state machine built in, it has the awake, the take damage, the knock and the knock code, but I could have also put um, all of this check distance stuff in there. Or I could make another parent for log that's like um, not ranged enemies, but enemies that chase the player at a certain distance. And I could have put all of this movement code in there. And then I could have had the log code just be stuff that is specific to the log. So like maybe the animator or something. And that would have made our lives a little bit easier. But I've already done that because we have all of these, all of this stuff in the enemy code. So now when we make a new enemy, which we're going to do soon, uh, we're going to make a like a bat thing. Um, we can just have it inherit from enemy. So it's a little bit about project structure that I wanted to talk about today. And specifically, before we did anything with the treasure chest, I wanted to fix that interactable stuff. So actually, no, I'm going to need that down there for the next thing we're doing. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the uh, comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter. You can find out when I post new videos. You can follow me on Discord. Um, the Discord community is awesome. Everybody there is really, really cool. And if you have any questions, you can ask them. Usually somebody's totally willing to step up if I'm not there. Um, but I'm there. I'm trying to be there every day. So, all right. Um, yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.